Hello, my name is Michael Smith. This is the last, I think, in the set of basic procedural texture tutorials for Blender. What we've covered so far is first, what are procedural textures? What are coordinate systems? What are the different coordinate systems available to you and how do they work? Uh, how do you manipulate those coordinate systems uh, to stretch, rotate, uh, etc., your procedural textures? Um, and what are some of the built-in procedural textures? Uh, last tutorial, we covered how to take something and tile it, so repeat it over and over across your texture, along with making variations for each of the repeats. That version uh, created a uh, regular tiling, kind of like a checkered board. Now we're going to talk about how to make irregular tiling. So the way we're going to do that is pretty straightforward. We're going to take the work we already have from the last tutorial, um, I'll link this file in the description, and the last tutorial has this starting file in the description. Uh, so if you want to start there, go ahead and look at that one. And we're going to take uh, all of this bit here. So if you remember correctly, what we're doing here is taking the coordinate system, dividing it up in two by two squares, finding the bottom left corner of that two by two square, and then taking the position and subtracting the bottom left corner. That gives us a repeating coordinate system, which you can see here where we go from zero to two along X and Y over and over in all directions. Okay, so now what we wanna do is make that irregular. So the way we're gonna do that uh, is we're gonna use something called the Voronoi or Voronoi, I'm actually not sure, texture. So we're gonna go to texture, Voronoi texture. If you remember this from the built-in textures, tell you what, let me move this out of the way so we can zoom in a bit and you can see what I'm doing. Okay, uh, and we'll pull in the same scaled UV. Okay, if you remember that from the basic uh, textures, what this is going to give us, and let's scale this way down. Okay, what this is going to give us is with no randomness, a regular grid and each position on the grid uh, has a different random color. Uh, if we up the randomness, it's going to take those grid items and turn them into more interesting polygons. So still a grid, but kind of an irregular grid. So the good news is this lets us do what we want to do pretty easily because it actually comes with a position. This position is, uh, I don't actually don't know how it's computed, so it's not exactly the center and it's not the bottom left of each of these. Um, but it computes a position uh, for each of these that's somewhere in each of these cells. And so the same way we computed the bottom left, what we're going to do is use that position and subtract the global position, uh, subtract this from the global position to give us a local coordinate system for each one. So we're going to do add converter vector math and we're going to subtract this position. Oh, sorry, that's color. Subtract the position. Uh, and what we get are these little coordinate systems. Now, one thing you're going to notice is they also have blue in them. Uh, this position includes Z. That's actually useful. Uh, I found out in this tutorial. I've never used it for that purpose. Uh, we're going to get rid of it for the moment just to limit the confusion. So we're going to go to add converter vector math. And we're going to do a multiply. And we're going to multiply X and Y by 1. And we're not going to add Z. Okay. So if you do that, um, it gives you uh, the zero point more or less in the center or some variation of the center for each one of these cells. Uh, and so now that we've taken that position and subtracted the X and Y of the UV coordinate, we get these little coordinate systems. So if you take that, now everything else works the way it did before, right? So we can use our circle. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this, move this guy over, and we'll just put this coordinate system Oh, sorry. We're going to put this coordinate system into the circle. And then we're going to take the position and we're going to put the position into the input of the noise. So for every cell, this noise is going to give us a new color uh, and change the radius. Uh, and then this is going to draw a new circle or at least have a new coordinate system uh, for each one of these cells. And we're going to take the output of this, put it in there. Okay, so now what we get is this. So every circle has a different radius and every circle has a different color. Uh, one of the things that's interesting 
uh, is that actually, uh, and I guess I won't do it here, you can use, it. <laughs> it'll be confusing why it works, so I'll do it. If it's confusing, we'll, we'll do it differently in a different tutorial. But this position I mentioned as X, Y, and Z, the Z appears to be related, and I need to look this up, appears to be related to the size of the cell. So if we don't do this random variation of radius, if we just make Z1, it implicitly changes the size of the circles for different cells because the Z coming out of this position uh, is small, is, is farther away effectively than others, right? So if you do the, to find the circle, we're going the distance from zero, zero, zero. When we only have an X and Y position, that's only the distance of X and Y. When we have a Z position, now it's the distance of the Z, X and Y. And so the result of that is that actually changes uh, the sizes of the circles itself. So you might want to use that for the moment though. We're going to do what we were doing. So um, that is... how to do irregular tiling and use the position of the Vernoy or Veronoi texture to change the parameters of each thing that's there. The reason this is useful, um, this is actually useful for non-procedural textures. Blender Guru did a tutorial, which I will link below, where he was taking textures and mixing them in a way that helped remove seams, uh, even if they weren't seamless, and helped to reduce the visible tiling. What he did was this, effectively. So he used the same technique to use the Veronoi texture, create a coordinate uh, system at the center of each of the cells, and then use the, the corner, the center position of each of these cells, to randomize the scale, rotation, translation of each of those textures so that you break up those textures so that they don't look the same. Uh, so this is a really useful technique for doing a whole bunch of different things, and hopefully you find it helpful. Thanks.